Hi everyone at La Cite de la Mer. Happy 20th anniversary. My name is Jeffrey Taylor, Director of Collections at RMS Titanic Inc. My role is to care for the Titanic artifacts here in our storage facility. We want to make sure they maintain a constant relative humidity and temperature for their safety. We maintain a database on the artifacts and track the history and research done on each one. We also prepare the artifacts in collaboration with other institutions, much as we did with La Cite de la Mer, to do loans and exhibitions and further the stories of the passengers and the stories of the artifacts all over the world. All of the artifacts in the exhibit at La Cite de la Mer had to undergo careful conservation and treatment before they could be presented to the public. Imagine that all of these artifacts spent at least 75 years, two and a half miles below the ocean surface in darkness and in very, very cold temperatures. The recovery of the artifacts actually put them in great danger. Once exposed to the air and the different temperatures and pressures, these artifacts rapidly began to deteriorate and they were in great danger. Happily, with the expertise and skill of trained conservators, Treatments were arranged, planned, and carried out on metal, textiles, paper, wood, rubber. All of these treatments from electrolysis, gentle cleaning, freezing, vacuuming, so many different processes presented new challenges for conservatives around the world. And France's EDF was on the front lines of this and helped develop many of the new technologies to preserve artifacts from below the sea. Currently at La Cite de la Mer, you have one of my very favorite artifacts from the ship Titanic, and that is the ship's telephone, possibly from the crow's nest. I love the form and function of this piece. In terms of personal items, the opera pumps from Edgar Samuel Andrew are very intriguing to me. He was Argentinian. He'd been studying in London and he was on his way to attend his brother's wedding in the United States. I think the formal opera pumps can show the plans for this trip. He was going to be dressed up at a happy occasion to attend his brother's wedding. I also think it's fascinating that he was originally booked on the ship Oceanic, but because of the times and the coal strike, he was forced to rebook on Titanic and of course, met his untimely and very fateful end. Part of our artifact loan to La Cite de la Mer was so rewarding in working with Virginie and her staff. They did so much research and careful study and found out many things about the artifacts that we could collaborate, share, and talk about. One in particular involves the beautiful gold watch with a clasp style bracelet that is on exhibit now in La Cite de la Mer. Virginie had done a lot of research about this particular watch, and we may have identified it with a particular passenger named Henry Blank, who was a jeweler. He traveled to Europe every year. He also was developing a new type of gold expandable clasp, the very type of clasp that is on the gold watch in the exhibit. What is very interesting, Virginie asked me to look very, very carefully for a small inscription on the watch. And indeed, we found one and were able to read patent pending. We do believe that Henry Blank was hoping to get a patent on this new type of watch clasp. The current Titanic artifact set that is in La Cite de la Mer today on exhibition had many challenges to be realized. Originally planned in 2019, the pandemic in the spring of 2020 delayed everything. We had to stop shipment at the last minute. Finally, in January of 2021, we were able to send the artifacts on their own without any uh, person to accompany them. Virginie and her staff received the artifacts in Cherbourg with great care, and they arranged a wonderful virtual unpacking condition check and installation meeting. I was so impressed and happy with the care uh, that they gave these artifacts. 